Welcome, everyone, to Real Estate 360 Live. I'm your host, Ryan Sloper. For those of you not familiar with the show, my guests and I will cover every angle of real estate under the sun, from interest rates to the economy to what's happening in Washington. Anything that affects our local real estate markets will be covered here. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. We are in our new time slot, 9 to 10 a.m. every Monday. So make sure that you tune it in here. You will get the uh, stone cold hard facts about what's going on in the real estate market as far as um, issues that you may be having with credit, trying to obtain home loans, um, short sales versus foreclosures. Any questions that you may have, you can call the off-air phone number, which is 877-245-2030. That's 877-245-2030. Or you can leave us a question on our website at realestate360live.com. That's realestate 360 live.com. Remember, if it's real estate, it's covered here. Got a great show lined up for you guys today. Wanted to really take some time since this is our new time slot, uh, and and go over a lot of the questions that we've been receiving from a lot of listeners over the last few weeks um, and help people better understand where we are in today's real estate market. Joining me on our panel today, discuss the many issues of last week as well as what's on deck this week, is Luis Camarosano, who is the general manager of HomeGain. Luis is often cited in the media as an industry expert in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, CNN Money, Fox Business, Smart Money, MSN, and numerous others. Lewis, how you doing today, buddy? I'm grand, Ryan. How are you today? I'm doing well, sir. So, you know, we got a lot of stuff to jump in today. I did want to start kind of and, and give people an indicator of what's what's going on this week as far as market movers that could change interest rates up or down. This week is the employment week, um, so on Friday the BLS will report the September employment data. The early estimate is for non-farm jobs increased to 120,000 from the 90,000 in August. Uh, private non-farm jobs are expected plus 130,000 with the unemployment rate changed unchanged at 8.1%. So it'll be interesting to see where the employment numbers are. Obviously, I don't put too much stock in where these employment numbers are right now um, because of the fact the fact that they're basically taking and removing so many people off of you know the people that were receiving unemployment or are no longer searching for work anymore. They're removing them for the numbers. So I think that the picture that we get from these reports is not very accurate. Would, would you tend to agree with me? Well, I'd agree, but one number that is worth looking at is just what the new claims are, because that gives Correct. you a sense of how many people are, are still losing their jobs. Yeah, absolutely. But the and, you know, number you're correct is, is skewed because it doesn't take into account those people who have stopped looking or have been just not out. Is it out of work for 12 months or, or 18 months? I believe it's I believe it's after 12 months, but I'll, I'll have to double check that. I think it is 12 months, though. Um, and, and, you know, with the Fed basically coming out with coming out with quantitative easing infinity or whatever you want to call it, um, we did see interest rates drop down to their lowest points ever last week. Um, Lewis, you and I continue to say that, you know, it's interesting. We don't feel like, you know, the rates can continue to go lower, but the Fed is accomplishing what they set out to do, which is to artificially manipulate the, mor- the, the mortgage-backed security market, which they're buying at a clip of $40 billion a month or up to $40 billion a month. And where are they um, buying them from? They're just basically Anything printing money out of thin air. Mac. So it's yes. in a sense of bailout of taking those bad assets off their books. And you pointed out last week that they get bailed out, and then what do they do to help their balance sheet more? They charge higher fees. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm often struck by, you know, many people are just like, well, how come I'm, you know, I'm seeing that the mortgage-backed security, the Fannie Mae coupon, the 3% coupon is XYZ, but when I go to a lender and I try to obtain that rate, I cannot do it. And it, it's basically because, see, the these interest rates are available for the lender to give the consumer. However, they want to make money, and they can't necessarily make all their money off of you know the interest rate if it's around three percent or so. So the way they do that is they they make it in fees on the origination side of, of giving you that home loan. So it may pay them a few percentage points on the actual loan amount, but their long term rate of return is not going to be that great at you know at around three percent interest rates. So it's not really to their uh, to, to their advantage to continue lending at those. So they're kind of letting the rates drift up a little bit or passing on rates that are not exactly where they should be. Um, now many people are saying you know well. Do you think that I should just hold on? Do you think that I should continue to wait for interest rates to get better? I've 
said week after week that I really don't feel like if they do go lower, they're only going to go by lower by a little bit. And I would say they have gone substantially lower. I mean, another quarter to three eighths from where I thought they would be. Um, but how much room is there for to, for them to go lower? I, you know, I really don't know because we really have. Line, if they do go lower, they'll just jack up the fee. Exactly, and, and your because what will happen? Effective rate of borrowing will, will not go much lower. No, they'll they'll raise the fees up to basically compensate for the money that they're losing, and it, that, that tends to be the case all the time. I mean, we're seeing basically every three to four months, FHA is raise, raising their mortgage insurance premiums. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac they're having basically increased fees to the lender. Um, so ultimately, the consumer's the one that's going to pay the price for this. Uh, I, I do think that, you know, long term, I don't know how sustainable these interest rates are at the levels that they're currently at. Um, the Fed obviously has said that they they have all the intentions in the world of, of letting things stay kind of on the same playing field until 2015, which is a good indicator that our economy is very lackluster right now, and they don't think that it's going to get better anytime soon. The interesting part about what the Fed's doing is that they feel by – fueling the mortgage market and the real estate market that they're actually going to really be able to really put a dent in the employment rate. And I just don't see that to be true. Lewis, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you, do they, can they possibly think that by keeping interest rates low that they're actually going to do something to the employment market? No, I don't, I don't think they think that at all. I think they're just saying that. I think, as you and I have discussed many times, the reason for the low interest rates are to keep the banks and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae bailed out and also to keep the cost of the government borrowing low so they can continue to spend <clears throat> and not have to address the debt issue. So, And also, you know, they're trying to reinflate the housing bubble by getting people to move in and out of homes on credit. And it's really not helpful to the economy. It's only helpful to keep the game going, to keep the uh, sovereigns able to continue to spend money and not have to address the political constituencies, which, as you've seen in Greece and Spain, with austerity that's you know the united states has not had to cut back really one bit on anything nor do they really have any intention of doing so i mean every day we're hearing of another program um that is out there that possibly should be cut that's not that's extended um i will talk later in the program today about the potential for short sales could be in big trouble if the debt forgiveness act is not extended and and i'll give you the the nitty-gritty details on that so if you are considering a short sale um i'll let you know what the parameters are to make sure that you may not be hit with some sort of tax liability um that could come down the pike if they don't get this legislation taken care of and there's one Um, other thing on that we could talk about later too to to tantalize our listeners, there's another issue that might hurt short sales in, in the coming year as well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Obama has actually been um, writing Congress lately to approve his refinance plan that he proposed last February, what, which basically in his eyes would lower lending rates for millions of borrowers who have not been able to get out from under their mortgages, basically the ones, people that are upside down. And uh, Republicans have obviously objected to this, citing, among other things, that there's an estimated $5 billion to $10 billion in cost of this proposal. Um, you know, I've been saying all along that any plan that they really come out with that they think that they're going to be able to manipulate these mortgages just by telling the banks, hey, we have this plan, go along with it, it's not going to happen. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, obviously they're controlled by the government at this point, so that they, those HARP 1.0, 2.0, those programs, they can work for people that have existing Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac service loans. But what about everybody else? What about everybody else that doesn't have a loan that's serviced by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? Well, that's what this plan is, is trying to – they're trying to help those people. But – Obviously, I don't think that they're going to be able to force anything down the throats of these banks and make them do anything. They're not going to go along with the plan just because they come out and say, oh, this is going to be great for consumers because it's going to let them take advantage of the low interest rates. I mean, Lewis, it would make common sense that really what, is, what do we need a program for that? If, if banks really wanted to do something, they could – just the way they modify people's loans when they lose a job and they're willing to modify, which is a very small percentage of the population that they actually do modify their loans – but just the way they do that, if they really wanted to let people take advantage of these interest rates, somebody that's at a 5 5.5% five rate right now and they've made their payment on time for the last 24, 36, however long it is, whatever parameters they wanted to set, they could just 
sign one piece of paper and modify that person's loan for a, 30, a new 30-year term if they wanted to do that. It's not in their best interest to do it because banks are in business to make money. And I think that many people forget that just because of a lot of what's going on out there, the banks being bailed out, there's a bad taste in many people's mouths that they're some, should be entitled to get their loan modified. Unfortunately, I think that this would create a scenario um, where the taxpayers are going to end up paying even more money if we would go along with a program like this. Would you agree with that, Lewis? Well, you know, you're making the point that the banks are the ward of the state, but and they do the, the bidding of the state, but they don't necessarily help out the, the people that they lent the money to. Correct. Because it's not in their interest to do so. So they went, yep. you know, during the housing crisis, well, before the housing crisis, they made a bunch of loans that they should never have made, but they only made them at the government's urging because of the government policy of wanting everyone to get into a house. So there were a bunch of programs to get people into houses. So they made a lot of bad loans, and they got stuck with the bad loans. But wait, no, they didn't get stuck with the bad loans. They got bailed out. And right. now that the, the banks are bailed out, you would think that using taxpayer money, they would help bail out the, the people they lent the money to, but that hasn't happened. And you're seeing it with QE3. This is really just another bank bailout, which is is, is ostensibly uh, created to help unemployment, but it's not going to do that. All it's going to do is pile more debt upon debt, and as you mentioned in prior shows, kick the can down the road to eventually a dead end. But you know, there's there's no real political will to stop this, and since the Federal Reserve has the ultimate power, there's really no check on it. Congress gave up the authority over 100 years ago in 1913 to allow the Fed to basically do whatever they want and to do it in secret and to print money at will. This is what you get. Yeah, um, unfortunately, this is you know this is the the dangerous path that we have um, you know been venturing down for some time now, and it seems that we have reached the point of no return. And things have got you can do, Ryan, is just continue to print because if you stop and you raise interest rates, there'll be a horrific um, depression, which probably would be a good thing because it would allow the economy to restructure. But no one wants to do it on their watch. And you saw Obama on Letterman the other night. He said the debt is not a problem short term. He said, well, midterm and long term it is, of course, but not while he's president. It's not so he can continue to spend. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and it's like we, we're this basically being the election year. Nothing's getting done. We, this is like another lost year. Um, you know, all these different proposals. I haven't heard one, you know, instead of talking about, hey, Congress, why don't you pass my, you know, plan for refinancing all the, you know, the one in three homeowners that are underwater that have been paying their mortgage on time, why don't you talk about a plan to get rid of the national deficit? How about that's that? That's not a special interest. That's something that affects everybody. But, you know, when you have the tragedy of the commons, everybody still has their hand out, even though they know that, by putting their hand out and getting the benefit, they're depleting their actual own resources. Yeah, and I think you know, I think it's important, and especially for many listeners out there, to understand that the macro stuff that's going on here. I mean, it, it, there's major trickle down, you know, stuff that's taking place that they continue to print. They're going to continue to not pay attention to the deficit, and ultimately, it's going to hurt everybody. Um, I, I what you know, what can you do, Ryan? I mean, if you're at the stage where you can actually take advantage of these rates. You're not harming anybody if you take them. In fact, you'd be well advised to try to get yourself one of these low interest rate mortgages right now as inflation, as you mentioned in the past, continues to rise. Your mortgage rate will remain the same, and you'll protect yourself against that future inflation. I, I, I definitely agree, and I, and I would – I would definitely urge, and I would say for people that are out there that are frustrated, that are unable to refinance, that they look at alternative methods. We've discussed this on many shows prior, that they try to you know, borrow money from their 401k if they can, or for stock from a stock portfolio, or if they can get a gift from a relative. Anything that you could possibly do that would allow you to take advantage of these interest rates, it's my personal opinion that you should do so. Because it's not like you know, you're you're like, well, I'm just throwing that bad money in, into the house because I don't really have any equity in it to begin with. I don't look at it like that. If you plan now, unless you plan on moving, you know, or you you have to move in the next couple of years. But if you plan on staying there long term, or even if you don't, if you're planning on using it as an investment property, there's not a better way to you know to take advantage of of the real estate market and what it could potentially mean for you later on down the road when inflation sets in to take advantage of the low interest rates now. Um, now, granted, not everybody's going to be able to take advantage of them, but do whatever you can what's in your power to try and take advantage of these interest rates. We're coming up on a break. When we come back, 
Short sales may be in big trouble, and I'll let you know why when we come back. Stay right there.